We are back with some more NFL action here for the divisional round of the playoffs. Had some great games last weekend for the wild card, so let's jump right into it. Now, we start out on Saturday as the Jaguars travel to Kansas City to take on the Chiefs. The Jaguars come into this one as the 12th overall team in the hot to bet power ranking. The Chiefs are the second overall team. And obviously, the Jaguars have been red hot as of late. You know, a great comeback against the Chargers last weekend in the wild card to get that win. They finished the regular season very, very strong. Winners of five straight games going into that one. And overall, it's just a team in the Jaguars that has played great this season for the Chiefs. Obviously, coming off the bye as the one seed last week um, but it's a Chiefs team that did beat this Jaguars team by 10 points earlier in the season and obviously the Chiefs have been a great playoff team here for the past you know five years at least of the Patrick Mahomes era um, you know and on the season he was great 5200 yards 41 touchdowns on the year Travis Kelsey was also a great target with over 1300 yards receiving Juju Smith-Schuster really stepped up in the wide receiver room with the loss to Tyree Hill this season over 900 yards receiving for him as well Pinkeo leads the way rushing the ball 830 yards and, and offensively it's just the Chiefs team that was once again great this season and while they struggled a little bit against better teams we've seen them turn it on in the playoffs before and overall they're putting up 29.2 points per game but it's not to say that the Jaguars are a bad offensive team and obviously they've been playing great as of late I mean Trevor Lawrence has had a pretty strong stat line this season 4100 yards in the year 25 touchdowns to go along with that Christian Kirk was a big reason why they were able to open up the passing game leads the receivers with over 1100 yards and eight touchdowns on the season not to mention Travis Etienne did a great job running the ball over a thousand yards rushing for him and offensively they did a great job moving the ball downfield putting up 23.8 points per game obviously Doug Peterson a great head coach to you know Doug Peterson and Andy Reid two coaches you know who are very familiar with each other going into this game defensively it's two teams um, they've been fairly even as well Jaguars giving up 20.6 points per game the Chiefs giving up 21 points seven points per game but even with how well the jaguars have been playing this is not going to be an easy game to go into and, and certainly you know you wouldn't expect it to be in the playoffs obviously arrowhead's never an easy place to play um, but i really think it's a chiefs team that gets it going gets it turned on this week and patrick mahomes just continues to show off in the playoffs so i'm putting my money on andy reed and company here in this game i think they start the playoffs off with a pretty big win taking the chiefs minus eight and a half here against the jaguars now for the second game on Saturday, we got an NFC East matchup between the Giants and the Eagles. The Giants come into this one as the ninth overall team in the high to bet power ranking. The Eagles are the fifth overall team. And overall, it was two teams that struggled a little bit down the stretch of the regular season. Now, albeit the Eagles was, was primarily due to Jalen Hurts not being on the field. Um, but, you know, it was a Giants team that started off the season very, very hot and, and then only won two of their final eight regular season games. Um, but you can kind of throw that all out the window. When we get to the playoffs right i mean the giants looked very strong against the vikings last week and, and overall daniel jones really you know took a huge step up this year and, and just looked like a great quarterback 3200 yards 15 touchdowns on the year for him and, you know albeit not the greatest stat line in the world but they've just done a good job finding ways to win finding ways to get the ball downfield and, and finding ways to stay in games darius slayton led the way in the receiving room with 724 yards saquon barkley obviously a major piece and a major contributor in this offense over 13 1,300 yards rushing for him and offensively it was the Giants team like I said that just did a good job staying in games putting up 21.5 points per game um, but they go up against a red hot offense in the Philadelphia Eagles here obviously Jalen Hurts returned to the field in week 18 a game where they ultimately beat this Giants team um, albeit it was a much closer game um, than the first meeting between these two teams but you know wasn't a ton of starters on the field in that game anyway um, before Jalen Hurts 3,700 yards 22 touchdowns on the season for him A.J. Brown was a major pickup in the offseason for this Eagles team. Over 1,400 yards receiving for him. Devonta Smith also was a great receiver. 1,100 yards receiving for him on the season. Not to mention Miles Sanders was strong in the running room. Jalen Hurts is obviously a strong rusher as well. And then offensively, it's an Eagles team that's very, very good. But up 28.1 points per game. Um, but defensively, the Giants have, have you know held their own and have stayed in these games. They're a good defensive team as well. Holding their opponents to 21.8 points per game. The Eagles, 20 
17.2 points per game and i think really the key for the giants in this game is going to be to force turnovers and i know you know you can't put a whole lot of weight and then the it's hard to beat a team three times because really the stats don't line up to that it's not um but i think it's hard to cover against a team three times and, and don't fact check me on that one either but the giants coming into this game as seven and a half point underdogs even on the road against a team coming off their bye I think they just keep this one much closer than that. I think it comes down to the last possession. I'm taking the Giants plus seven and a half here against the Eagles. Now, before we get into Sunday's games, if you haven't already checked out the website, head over to hottipbest.com. We've got college basketball, NFL, NBA, NHL, UFC, and horse racing picks being posted up on the site every single day. So make sure you take a look at all of that. Also, follow the Hot Tip Bets main account at Hot Tip Bets on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter to stay up to date with all the content being posted over there, as well as my personal account at Hot Tip Bets Chris on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter to stay up to date with all the content that I am putting out. And also on BetStamp, where you can get early access to all of the picks and get a notification every single time that I place a bet. And last but definitely not least for watching here on YouTube, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any future uploads. Most importantly, drop a comment down below. Let me know who you guys are betting on here for the divisional round. Now let's get into Sunday's games. Now we start out Sunday's show in the AFC is the Bengals take on the Bills. The Bengals come into this game as the fourth overall team in the hot tip at power ranking. The Bills are the number one overall team for both these teams. You know, we're able to, to sneak out wins against backup quarterbacks last week. Bengals beating the Ravens, the Bills beating the Dolphins, but ultimately they both win their games. And here they are in the divisional round. And on a whole, both these teams were very, very good this season. You know, Joe Burrow had a strong year, 4,400 yards, 35 touchdowns on the year. T Higgins, Jamar Chase were both excellent receivers both over a thousand yards receiving on the season for them joe mixon did a really good job running the ball as well 814 yards and it offensively it was an offense that found a lot of success not turning the ball over and that was a big reason why you know they were able to put up 12 wins this season um and overall it's just the bengals offense that was scoring some points putting up 26.1 points per game um and as far as the bills go they've also been you know one of the most complete teams in the nfl this season josh allen led the way with 4200 yards and 35 touchdowns on the season he's also the second leading rusher for this team not to mention stefan diggs was an outstanding player once again 1400 yards on the year for him and the offensive line for the bills has really made it easy for them to to be an offensive powerhouse once again this season putting up 28.4 points per game um, and on the defensive side of the ball both these teams have played fairly well as well the Bengals holding their opponents to 20.1 points per game the bills a little bit better holding their opponents to 17.9 points per game um, but even going into this game with with how well both these teams have played I just think it's going to be one of those games that comes down to the last possession. I really like how this Bengals team and the defense especially has looked. And, and even in the, the Ravens game um, where they struggled at moments, ultimately they played a very complete, very solid game. And if they can do even half of that here against the Bills, they're absolutely going to be in this game. Um, and I really think the Bills struggle to run away with it. Taking the Bengals plus five here against the Bills. And finally, to close out the divisional round, we got the Cowboys taking on the 49ers. The Cowboys come into this one as the sixth overall team in the hot tip power ranking. The 49ers are the third overall team. Obviously, both these teams, probably two of the more impressive wins um, of the wild card round. The Cowboys for sure get a huge win over Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. 49ers, you know, handle business against the Seahawks for sure. And, you know, it's a 49ers team that, you know, it's been beaten to death and it's going to be beat to death all week. But coming to this game on an 11 game winning streak, absolutely impressive i mean brock purdy you know it gets a ton of credit defensively it's obviously a 49ers team that's been great as well but you know brock purdy hasn't been a bad quarterback by any means getting his team to this point 1300 yards and 13 touchdowns on the year for him brendia and Ayuk led the way receiving wise with over a thousand yards this season greg kittle was also a playmaker for this 49ers team over 750 yards for him as well obviously the pickup of christian mccaffrey um you know from the panthers was huge for the team and, and offensively it's just a 49ers team that's been able to score some points, putting up 26.5 points per game. Offensively, it's a team that plays very well. Um, but the Cowboys have been offensively a strong team as well. Obviously, Dak Prescott missed a little bit of time, but 2,800 yards through the air for him this season. Not a bad stat line at all. C.D. Lamb led the way receiving-wise with over 1,300 yards. And obviously, Tony Pallard and Ezekiel Elliott were both very strong rushers. Over 800 yards apiece for them. 21 combined touchdowns for those two in the regular season. And it was a Cowboys team that 
offensively, was also able to score points, put up 27.5 points per game. Um, but despite Brock Purdy, despite Brack, Dak Prescott and, and how they have looked this season, I think the real advantage for the 49ers and the real advantage in this game, um, really like it's been all season, is going to come on the defensive side of things. The 49ers have just been so, so strong on the defensive side of the ball. And, and they're a very, very hard team to deal with, holding their opponents to 16.3 points per game. Now, it's not to say the Cowboys have had a bad defense because they've had a fairly strong defense as well this season, only giving up 20.1 points per game. But going on the road here in this one, I don't think it's going to be an easy opponent at all. It's a 49ers team that's just been playing so, so well. Um, and I think they dominate this game on both sides of the ball. Taking the 49ers, minus three and a half here against the Cowboys.